Hello and welcome to Cinema Subculture. My name is Gary. Salo, or The 120 Days of Sodom, was released in 1975 as a film directed by Pier Paolo Pasolini. It tells the story of a group of fascists who kidnap some young men and women in order to use them for whatever means they wish. So this was Pasolini's final film. Um, I've never been a huge fan of Pasolini. Um, I enjoyed his early sort of neorealist stuff. Uh, Gospel Corn to St Matthew is good. Trilogy of Life I was never such a big fan of. Um, and when I was revisiting this film for uh, doing these videos, I did go in with some trepidation because I, I, I really did not was not too keen to revisit this film. I thought, as I remembered it, it was quite a tough watch. Um, but what's very bizarre about this film and what's quite strange uh, is that, it, that that's contradictory nature of how it is very watchable, but also quite disturbing at the same time. It seems to be able to balance these two things in a very strange way. I think Pasolini intentionally keeps the audience at a distance. For one thing, the film has very little plot. Um, so the film begins, we are introduced to these four fascist libertines and uh, we see them sort of rounding up these uh, young men and women. Then they're sort of taken to a kind of Baroque mansion. But then not a lot happens. The, the 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 film is sort of segmented with these scenes of women recounting a uh, sort of sexual escapades of their youth while everyone just sort of sits around and listens. There's really not a lot of narrative direction or dynamic. Um we don't have a lot of or really any a uh, sort of interior character psychology, which is quite unusual. Um, Pasolini introduces us to these characters very in a very kind of thin way, uh, a very shallow way. Um, we don't get a sense really of any kind of character development who these characters are. Um, it's quite clear that um, our sympathies lie with the, the captured young people. They're always portrayed as obviously being upset, distressed. Um, which is contrasted with the sort of light-hearted frivolity of uh, the fascist, their fascist captors. Pasolini's style also has a distancing effect on the audience, um, keeping the audience as more of an observer rather than a active participant in the movie. Uh, his camera work is generally always very distant. Um, he has these a uh, form very formal perfectly framed uh shots um static often quite static camera um is a, a great sense of stillness um and in contrast to the actual dialogue the things that are being described uh, in screen the compositions are extremely beautiful and reminiscent of renaissance painting so you get this strange contradiction of a lot of horrible content but being delivered in a very refined way. The the, the tone of the film is extremely classy. Um, through the music, just the general relaxed tone of the film, um, the beautiful images and dialogue. And dialogue is strange because even though um, it, the, the content is horrible, uh, the delivery is strangely delivered very calmly, like very matter-of-factly, which um, I think is sort of satirising um, the power dynamics um, of the situation. It's a strange one because because those tonal choices make the film, in a way, quite easy to watch. Um, but it's, it's hard to describe why it is quite disturbing at the same time because those two things seem to contradict each other. There is some graphic scenes, um, but I think the film essential isn't all that graphic uh, overall, even though it'll, it'll often describe a lot of horrible things but not actually 
show them on screen. Bernardo Bertolucci described the film as atrocious and sublime, which uh, is a quite an apt description for me because it describes these two, the, the, this way that the film is able to combine these two things uh, in quite an unusual way. Um, because, yeah, what shocked me re-watching the film was how watchable it was um, at the same time as that does not detract from um, its disturbing qualities. Um, yeah, it's a very strange sleight of hand that, that uh, Pasolini has managed to do there, which only contributes to the film's power. Pasolini referred to the film as a metaphor for what power does to the human body. And I think my takeaway from the film uh, thematically is that on the one hand, it's a, a searing, scathing indictment of, of fascism of um, the will to power when a power is sought for its own means and the kind of dehumanising effect that that has on others. I think Pasolini is trying to say that the power itself is an extremely um, intoxicating, a dangerous notion. The presentation of the film also makes the film's message uh, go down easier in a sense which ultimately gives it more impact which I think is maybe Pasolini's genius. So you've been watching Cinema Subculture, if you've enjoyed this video please remember to subscribe on YouTube, like the video and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.